I'm part way through painting, um, specifically priming and uh, putting on the filler coat. I'm using Stuart Systems and uh, I did pre-order and took delivery of all of the product or most of the product when I uh, got the shipment out for the aircraft. Um, that way we got all in the container and saved a wee bit on uh, freight. So the first step obviously was covering the aircraft. That all went really well, thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, applying all the tapes. And then um, just before you get into um, applying the filler, um, the filler primer, you use the EcoBond cement, the same cement that you use to adhere the fabric uh, with, and you dilute it slightly and paint it over the uh, fabric. And that provides a seal. And um, so down the back here, I've got, um, probably seen these before, rudder elevators and over in the corner a tailplane. I haven't yet applied the sealer to, to them. And the reason is I ran out. Um, which is a little bit of a, a problem for me because I can't seal them and then I can't prime and fill them until I get the sealer. So what I've decided to do is I have continued. I had enough to do uh, the cargo doors. I've also done the gear legs, which I've got down on the floor here, and uh, the entire fuselage inside and out. So I've made a lot of progress with that. Um, I haven't done this before, so it's quite a learning experience. So I've spent a lot of time on the forum chatting to different uh, guys and just generally researching um, via Google uh, how to set up a paint booth. I've done a very makeshift one, um, certainly no expert. This is my first attempt at it. And what I did in, in the end is I strung a, a line around the ceiling there. I've, I've held it up with uh, screw and clips. And then I, uh, I simply purchased from the hardware store some uh, drop down plastic sheeting. That went up pretty well. There's a couple of hours work in there. And then I spent uh, a number of hours um, masking the aircraft up, um, got that done. It was actually pretty straightforward, just takes time. And uh, got all that done pretty thoroughly. Um, and kept it on the wooden frame here. And I've just used uh, exactly the same uh, technique for supporting the aircraft. I'm able to roll it over. Um, and that gives me access to the, the top of the aircraft and also the bottom. What I decided to do after watching some videos on Stuart's systems was to use a foam brush to apply the, the first couple of coats um, of the filler. Foam brush that looks just like that. And the reason I did that was because I downloaded, I found a video on YouTube by Stuart's systems. Unfortunately, what I didn't realize is that that video was quite an old one. It was a number of years old, apparently. I discovered this when I got in touch with them and they said they don't do it that way anymore. Okay, maybe I should have <laughs> searched around a wee bit more. Um, anyway, it hasn't affected the outcome too much. I, what happened was when I, uh, when I applied one of the coats, I got a couple of small blisters all confined to one area on the gear leg. And uh, what it turned out to be causing them, I think, was the eco bond, the, uh, the cement that used for it adhering the um, covering to the gear legs and also for sealing uh, the fabric. It had uh, stayed a little bit thick in a couple of parts and I think what it probably was, was drips of it that had come through the fabric. And I hadn't noticed them. So anyway, it was a very easy fix. I, I simply picked them off and reapplied the primer. That all then uh, went very well. I got two coats done with uh, just brushing it on with a foam brush. And this morning was my first attempt at spraying. And uh, that was quite difficult to be honest. Now I set up everything exactly as per the instructions. I, I bought the, uh, the same spray gun. Um, there it is there, the finish line four. Set it up um, with the settings perfectly as per their instructions. <coughs> um, now, then I did run into one problem with the first coat was it felt, uh, it, it dried very, very quickly and it felt like sandpaper. It was a very quick solution. <laughs> it's, apparently uh, it does that when you hold the, uh, the, the spray nozzle too far away. And I had it, um, I guess at about eight inches off the fabric and I needed to bring it uh, a little bit closer to about six inches. Anyway, in between coats, you do sand it back. So I was gonna to have to do that anyway, and that fixed it straight away. The next coat I applied, um, just simply held the nozzle closer and it went on very, very well. So now, um, actually I'm about to call it quits for the, for the day. It's uh, really, really hot here. We've got a nor'wester, which uh, it's a fond wind in New Zealand. Uh, fond wind you only get in a few parts of the world and it, and it gets very, very dry and really hot. And I'm in a shed that's, that's lined and insulated. <laughs> it took me a long time to insulate it. 
Uh, the upshot, upshot is it's over 30 degrees Celsius in the shed, and if you're trying to convert that into Fahrenheit, it's bloody hot. So um, what I've done is I have rubbed back the uh, fabric now with the sandpaper, three, uh, 320 grit, I think it is. And then I just use, uh, as per the instructions, use a, a red scotch bright. Brings it up really smooth, actually. And um, good finish on it. And I've still got to do the belly. I've still got to do the gear legs and the doors. They, they can wait till tomorrow morning. And uh, then I have a little bit of a conundrum. What to do next? Do I proceed? Okay, so I've got a shipment coming out from Stuart Systems with some white primer. And the reason is I didn't realize, so I'm gonna paint this orange, bright orange, and uh, should be the color of uh, that bucket down there. Basically, I spoke to Andy at Stuart Systems and he said, how bright do you want this thing? And I said, I want people to stop dead in their tracks and just use an expletive that bright. Um, so he assures me, but what I didn't realize is that to get it to really pop out, it should be on a white primer. Um, gray will work, but maybe not quite as bold. I now have some white primer on the way from the States, from Stuart Systems. But as with all the air freight um, with COVID, we're getting, uh, particularly down here in New Zealand, you know, we, we're kind of almost at the end of the world here. And uh, well, not actually the end of the world, but apparently if you stand on a chair, you can see it. Um, stuff gets stuck in Auckland and they just don't have enough aircraft coming down here to where I am in Christchurch. Normally it's not a problem. Normally there's flights every hour. Freight turns up, you know, overnight. But at the moment I'm waiting on some parts that have been uh, stuck in Auckland or other countries for two or three weeks. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take this uh, white primer to get here. I'm going to possibly do a test patch with the orange and just see how it goes, maybe on the inside of one of the gear legs. But the other issue I, I do have, of course, is the, the tailplane and rudder, etc. the elevators. I can't proceed with them. And the problem I'm then going to face is that if I go ahead and put the orange coat on here, the last thing I want to do is then be spray painting this charcoal um, grey full of primer on other parts in a couple of weeks when I've got freshly painted bright orange uh, fuselage sitting here. So I'm, I've got a bit of th um, thinking to do. We'll see how that goes. So that's where I am at the moment. Um, look, still thoroughly enjoying it. I have slowed down a wee bit because it is school holidays down here and I've been trying to um, get out and do a bit of fishing with my son and a bit of camping. We've done a couple of overnight hikes and just generally enjoying the, um, the holidays with, uh, with the kids. But in between times, I'm still getting some good progress on the bee hawk. So there you go.